Hi guys, uh, John McTaggart here again. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're actually going to talk about something uh, in a response to actually quite a few comments that I have gotten in the videos and even a few um, emails about the settings of the camera um, and how to kind of set it up. So what I've kind of put together is what I use and what I like to call the best everyday settings for your X-Pro1. Now there are certain situations of course that'll dictate you switch that up a little bit but by and large this is what my camera is set on probably 95 percent of the time and I think it'll work best for you guys too to give you the best picture especially if you're going to print them. Um, I am a huge fan of printing out your work. To me it's not quite done until you actually have a physical print. Um, so these settings seem to work really well for me out of this camera so I'm going to kind of go through them uh, menu screen by menu screen um, and and kind of give you an idea of what I what my suggestions is I'm not going to go over every single point because a lot of them I just keep on the factory the default settings because it, it seems to work great so I'm going to highlight the stuff that I tweak or that are that I change and then go from there so for starters you of course want to have an X Pro 1 um, which is good and this is also something you can use on other the other Fuji stuff there might be a few tweet little few differences but by and large their their menu system is pretty um, pretty consistent so on the X-Pro1 you're going to want to <clears throat> go to the camera hit in the back hit the menu button which is right in the middle of this little joypad or keypad here or a little directional pad that opens up screen number one um, and the first the first thing we're going to look at is the ISO and I set mine to auto 95% of the time, maybe 99% of the time. And there's a sub menu that'll come up then and I basically have the range between 200 and 6400 with a 1 one sixtieth of a second minimum shutter speed. That shutter speed basically lets me shoot it handheld without worrying about any shaking or anything like that. Um, especially since not every lens I have is stabilized. Uh, that's a real all-purpose thing. The camera does a pretty good job of adjusting that. Every once in a while, it, it, it'll, I'll look at a shot and it won't make any sense, the ISO study that it has on, has on there. But you can always override that. Um, if I'm not in auto, I usually take it out when it's a, a, just a generally a darkened room or dimly lit room or even dusk scout or dawn when the light's not so good. And I will just set it to ISO 5000. To me, that's a real sweet spot for this camera, high ISO. Um, setting wise and it also prints pretty good um, anything above that can you're kind of 50 50 you have to do a little bit of work with it to get it to come out like you want but ISO 5000 works great um, but auto is what I suggest here the second thing is the image quality I shoot everything on my Fuji cameras in JPEG um, not everybody does that I know that uh, if you're gonna shoot raw a lot of people do they actually will change the film simulation in Lightroom which you can do um, they shoot it in RAW, bring it into Lightroom, and then actually put the simulation on it. That's perfectly fine. I'm certainly um, not going to argue with people that do that, but to me, what they, how they come out of the camera in JPEG are great. And I hope to get the exposure and everything right in the camera. So I don't want to spend a lot of time post-processing. It's never been my favorite thing. Uh, I'm not a big manipulator. I, I kind of like to take the picture and, and you know maybe a little exposure thing here and there, contrast thing here and there maybe a few shadow tweaks that's about it nothing else so I basically leave everything in fine JPEG with a 3 to 2 uh, ratio the dynamic range I, I, I set it at 100 um, I, I really don't notice much of a difference between the 100 and the 400 at least not a notable difference to me anyway to my eye um, film simulations I basically use two of them my black and white I use the black and white mode with the R filter so it'll be plus R I love the way these print. It gives great contrast. For me, it sets a better, a more moody picture. I just really enjoy it. When I shoot color, I'll either shoot standard or the Velvia. Velvia, I think it's called. Um, yeah, Velvia, sorry, the vivid kind of thing. Uh, I like that. It's got a little bit of a vintage look to it, and, and um, I enjoy the way the pictures look. That's completely up to you. The classic chrome you will not find on this camera, which is really unfortunate because it is amazing. Um, I do, that's the one thing I do miss uh, on this camera that I have on an X, the X-T1 and some of the newer Fuji bodies. It really is a unique and very cool, uh, very cool look. But that's, it's a small price to pay for what I, what I get with this camera. White balance in, in the second menu is 
it's for me always on auto. I can't remember when I ever have change that off of that really in any camera I've ever had the the, the, sen the the cameras do such a good job at figuring that out it's very rare that I would ever change it um, color I leave at zero in fact everything I leave at the factory setting with the exception of the sharpness which I will use plus one or plus two um, plus one seems to be a good spot that this the zero setting to me makes skin tones look a little plasticky uh, especially in black and white and I'm not a huge fan of that so plus one or plus two works and then the noise reduction I set on minus one um, I used to have it on zero but I actually read an article by Kevin Mullins who's an amazing wedding photographer um, in the UK and he strongly suggests minus one on noise reduction especially with you can notice it a lot in, in the higher ISO so I set mine to minus one the third menu screen uh, basically, the only thing that's changed on that is the function key. I set it to ISO. So when I hit the function key, I can change my ISO on the fly without having to look at the back of the camera and go from there. Menu 4 is, is something that I've sort of been toying with. I used to use this camera, basically hit the shutter button, focus halfway down, click it, rest. I've, been, I've switched the AF and AE lock button to switch and the AE and AF or excuse me, lock mode to switch, and the AE and AF lock button to AE plus AF. What that does is essentially turn this camera into a back focusing machine here. This little button right there now becomes how I focus the camera. But the catch is you have to switch the mode to manual um, focusing mode, and that's on the dial up in the front on the front here, and being the lower left hand of your of your camera body. It's got to be on manual. So what that does is basically turn this camera from focusing with the shutter button to focusing with this back button here. Now I shot DL DSLRs, Nikon and Canon for years and back button focused. In fact, it was one of the hardest things I had to get used to when I did switch over to Fuji stuff. It was very uncomfortable for me. Um, just felt weird for a long time. Now the only problem I have with this is I have not huge hands but they're kind of large I will miss this button <laughs> um, on more than one occasion I've hit the Q button before which is right below below it I have missed it over this way I have to be pretty conscious of where that button is to get it but at, the more I do it the more comfortable I'm getting with it it does make things to me a little bit more natural uh, of how I shoot but you may want to not touch that and then you leave it on the way that you know that it's sort of uh, comes out of the box uh, so you know that's pretty much it in basics these settings are, are my opinion only of course and you may read and find a whole bunch of other stuff and nobody's really wrong here a lot of its preference wise but I found through experience and through printing these things that these settings tend to produce the best image at least in my mind and and in the end that's what matters um, doesn't matter what settings you have if you're happy with how the image comes out and those are the settings that you should continue to use. So on that note, I'm going to end the video. If you like what we're doing here, um, please subscribe. Hit the like button on the videos. Um, and, and don't be shy about putting stuff in the comment box. Um, suggestions that we can make the channel better. Some things you'd like to see. Um, whether you like my Yankees hat or not. Anything. Um, I, I'm flattered and honored that I, we've gotten some subscribers and people seem to be receptive to the channel. I hope we all can learn something. I hope we all have learned something to this point. Um, and I will see you guys at the next video. Thank you so much for watching.